evening from PAP, Public Access Poetry. Tonight, we have as our first guest, Lenny Goldstein. Lenny has agreed to do this reading in order to promote his October reading at St. Mark's Church, which he has agreed to do in order to promote the use of run-on sentences, which he has agreed to use uh, in order to promote Lenny Goldstein. Lenny Goldstein. What is this lush confidence of life? Knowledge, porridge, nail polish. The violence is uneasy. What quails me gaps arisen in the horizon, shifts and drifts, flailing god flesh. The sky is a hanging ocean, dripping out to dry feast, beard and figuries. Holy lowly lollipop, doll midnight, trumpkins, gods in a tight dress nighty, nicely smelled, starched, pajamas blowing goodbye kisses on the world. What is this glib and plastic statement? Here, can you read it? Firemen bend over closer, and flame in the relic dry cracked pottery so the mysticism of arts turn into ants in your pants, your oiled gray pants where the pottery fled, working green dough dollars. Instead, in case coffin of frogs and molds, potteries, your reincarnated girlfriend or thorough, her fingers, veins, the reincarnated dust. Ust is the vus of dust, west of El Paso, just dust. Flagged petulant cactus suicides righteously watered, and in a hotel room in Florida, debating the culinary aspects of cannibal lovemaking, her fingers passing pleasantly through my body, circumspect of translation. Fling the lunar tropics as if a time suddenly clicked off in my head. Time clocks, there was a time of clocks, and suddenly racehorses clicked, drowning in the sea. Roman pennies wished away. Cornelius dwelt in the bottom. What is this confusion of life, a hurtless swell, heavenly hiri-kiri? Here we are in bed, you make me feel so good, a new man. A Paul Newman, with Hercules and heroes, we divest our days, trying to lift the rock. Agonies, sweet-smelling clove, un unwear, sadder hook claws, and into it, grin-ripping scream fire belly on camp goshes. Musty cubby scene of confusion and the one perfect alternative. Put it all down on paper and then go back and figure it out. Ugh, ugh, I put a feather behind my ear. Eagles scream melodies on fire, hot breath across sky, gnawing my ear. On Prometheus's chained mountain belly, can you pass the tulips? Walking past the cemetery, holy dope, cough drops haunts me. Madonna in your tight pants go away. It is as if time suicides us by, and then a push in the cave and shut. Jesus was shut away, and then he came out. It is as if time suddenly stopped listening and sucked. And woof, we all went. Oh, ugh, in hell. Clunk, clunk, clunk. The bullets is what rings me. Clear church bell door. Violent argument, investigate. Repeat, investigate. Armed violent, three gunmen, masked and dangerous, creeping, slipping through your peephole door. Lunar violence sets in, rocking and bopping the corners of your mind, fluid like any other word, blessed and deserves to dry up fast like hot yeast Tuesday night. Turkey quack, best rocks, two dollars sounds smacking. In this, turkey sounds like Q. If the whole word turkey had to be represented by a letter, that letter would be Q. And then I thought of turkey quack, and that explains it. It's insane. It's in far gone. I can't even read my own writing. Reel off into upper left space, but space is somehow the wrong word, too green and rubbery, where void is pale yellow. I need something clear white, exploding of vision, esmeraldic ecstasies, rippling, disintegrative melodies into the luna blue aqua of smiling frozen God. Blessed helpless, and do it again. God gives only head. When we write beauty, see it, smell it, hear it, it's beauty, it lifts and it's gone, and that's God all over. I want to write prose, damn it! At least a sentence which makes one thought complete, one lunar vascular revolution voyage, but the return trip and back like a boomerang with enclosed circuitry, buzz of electricity, elucidating brain and making it loony and moody. What must be a trick? There are keys to unlock. Dear sir, it regrets me to inform you that, dear slur, regrets to inform me as to the precise location. Dear slayer, Egyptian priests have it that exactly what did intend when said that, dear sir, Eastern Three Rings, the circus in town has closed due to the loss of a horse, prized and valuable and slightly overfed. 
Dear Sir, as to the price of oats, Dear Siamese twins, in a bucket when two heads are better than none, as to the precise location, Dear Slayer, an incision has been made. We regret you to inform me that left field has been canceled due to a, a, a slice in the middle. Exactly when did you intend to do that? Smell of grapefruit, soaked lips, stained, a list of things to think and do, hear and feel, a noise outside like a thrust of woodpecker, the banging of truck on hard pavement or passing pedestrian. A jar on radiator sits quietly, waiting for things to do. It could whistle and let slip its water for evaporation, or it won't fall over on its own suddenly. The jar is green, a smoky green apricot like the kind used to hold grapefruit or prune juice. The radiator is a dusty white or beige, the slats black. Outside in the country, a bird sings, a woodpecker or some kind of calling card, three sisters, feel wise. The plush canary perishes on a withered limb, what water wide, dried with evanescence. The outlining contrary radiator sings its pure whistle to the tune of the remote sister. All things related, the jar draws well its own center of attention like three Egyptian ladies veiled well at the well, water launched suddenly into gleaming ships with oars like ostrich wings, or young canaries singing for the pleasure of their mistresses. The violin creaks sullenly with a word at the chop of his head. The royal executioner is a woodpecker hiccuping wildly to the distant prisoner being a fruit herder, or a beige camel desert plain smooth into the butter-scotched sand, like a teeth of desert well hit, scorched, reconditioned. At the cluck of three, the head falls off, we and shrunken, the outbird wood canary sings, its task accomplished, beige or green, it can go home. A noise outside an empty jar, the jarring and irony in itself. Magnifique, slay the children bells, haw kills, haw kills, grow electric daffodils in my raisin breaded hair. Crazy go, I will not, duck weather in the shiesty palms but I will wear a cloak and go veiled at some post of the cold. Ye shall see me, or vanish, for I am Danish and have a doctor, unlike Hamlet, the little pig. Let him go, stark on the cross, he stole my scene and garbled my meat. Suck on thinking, suck on that. Blood is Elmer, and Elmer is blood. The Prophets, a series of declarative poems dedicated to fictional prophets. Hazebug, okay, great, and okay are two uncomparable words as the stars and passion cocaine into position for the remainder of the evening. Downtown in Olives, they bring cheese to feed the clingy monk. I see a parrot in the lion cave. Call for Jack Daniel. All on robes get clean, get dirty, get clean again. It's passion and loneliness that do it. The mighty washing machine smashes the pieces in my belly. Maybe ten wooden ships take the saints nowhere. Okay, great. And the radio has a broken leg. Should I repeat this? It's like a harmony of information. Hike, say the magic footballs in a science of mushrooms, mountains, meatballs, fall. Oh, earweb in my chin and ear, I did not wish you'd wear it here, giving me arrow in my flaming head. We need to be accurate like a period. Our departure eases over the arch wood water. Saints are brought out, and the way they are brought out breaks my heart. I stand in quicksand and can do nothing about it. The total regression of the saint. He has a bad dream and wakes up dead. <laughs> Speak up, O oh horrendous wonder, mist blocker. I needs must drown in you. Strength filters terror, joy, and salsa. So the saint is a priest and the priest a saint. This is a good technique, time tested, tried and true. Bebop popcorn, the treasure. Saints with sweet tooths roam the planet, looking for a friendly vibe. When invoking the muse, get serious, serious as hell. It's all shrugged off so fast, surfs so well. The daily news and hamburgers, among other things, loosens your mind, and I am your mind. Blown in through me, blown out. If you were a rich girl, I would love you, no less. So it's joyful and tangible, soft and loud, all waiting to be entered, to enter being. Three things to try in New York. Hash, pot, my mother. Okay. Getting down to specifics.
coins, shares, South African, American, like home stake. I would recommend some diversification, a force more powerful than war and its destruction. The concept will become less and less valid, or more and more valid. It's probably the most well-known coin in the world. For this purpose, where leverage is an objective and the subsequent and abrupt drop, in essence, it is a time to hedge. I think you have to stick up for the long life rather than the marginal, trend upward and not zoom upward, slightly more speculatively, the western deep levels. I think they are very attractive. It's probably a combination of this and the knowledge, thin and deceptive, that is highly speculative and dangerous. That's called clouds on the gold horizon pink paper, slightly tarnished. Togo the emperor, he liked it, the furniture of his basement. August did happen in World War One. Sweet boot he licked. Think he be Andrew Jackson. He be wrong, Yankee takes stick in head. Cut he be run for forest moon to dress, no swim to time. Day be bad, he sip root tea like he do. What am I doing? You are a monk in a Buddhist purist condition, tradition. Five hundreds of fading air sheets falloping get cigarettes in the wind. The chick got me off him good and mad, like he's really enjoying the stuff and loves to touch her tits. I mean the nipples. Anyway, I bite them and you get mad. Your convolutions harden and veins hit the highway. Red countryside mountains stretched pulsing. The cow under nut hall, meal in a flaming umbrella. The three Buddhist nuts crack willingly under the charm and protection of the female like R.D. was fucking everybody and couldn't get away with it. What makes him holier than thou? Pizza pie messes fabric of new blue check tablecloth, wrap of holier toothpick in the jar, a tube of usuals pronunciate the anal in an oral fixation of madness and frenzy. The woman was menzy, obviously in her fifties and dull. I couldn't get anywhere with her. Discuss menstruation. I'm not that kind of man. Hopefully, good. I mean the nipples. Excuse me up and drive me utterly mad. I need that messy communication from the gods. Mmm, cunt and wonder. Flying butterflies of distress, passion and bliss of her summer day. Making love out less doors, notably green in a field with small children walking by, taking no notice, throwing the ball around. I touch your leg, it glows in the all-day sun, a warm turnstile in the shade. Your egg quivers. I eat sand and lay with you, shimmering. A mint in a leaf-top mountain, it rolling off wonder-loose in my spine, a pure velvet cure infraction for which I am demoted two ways, by months, by not getting laid, by probably never getting laid again. But I don't care, I've got my baby, daddy, my mommy, sis, Uncle Sam, Aunt Faye, Cheryl, Dina, Aunt Margaret, Uncle Muddock, little Chavala. My tender regards to Broadway, smoke, board, and horizon. The little girl let me off never to see me again, cause I have a big mouth, stupid. Stupid things, I say. How do you make love? I want to really bad. For, oh, I need companion. She'll surf me to form blue and have us Roman pizzas for delivery. A hot clock every night in the steeple and Al sits waiting for wisdom. This is pre-dawn before century, so everyone is quiet and nobody moves. A gun is shot, fired, and mysteried, and vanished all so quickly it is dumb and remarkable, all at the same time. I like to explain, my friends. How do you make love? Hopefully, good and hard, sometimes loving and tender, or maybe even mediocre in despair, strugglingly with a cigarette dangling or not at all. A poem about moral degradation and despair, stupidity, worries. I think not, I came where I am, left off at the station. One more. Okay. First in a room, I will become aware of color. A suitcase is green, in my mind, the wall is red. If someone comes in, I am at a loss for words. The way all my girlfriends are getting married, I feel some new war is starting to ship them off. Don't start no rumors, but nobody doesn't like Edgar Lee. See, he said this in today's health. If he could describe it all, he would be an artist. But if he were an artist, there would be deeper wounds which he could not describe. Nibs, licorice, my teeth, cigarette, my lungs. Meatball, my belly, all for what? A little heartache? The music starts a symphony of piano and velvet. I'm thinking of having my brain styled. Did you hear about Ruby Keeler's brain tumor in Ladies Home Journal next to yellow den curtains? You can make yourself better than a Mark Eden bust of Homer on the hills. 
his curly clay all up in crullers for the unveiling of his latest look. Sex, 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 sex. I would rather sit like a cowgirl on a fence with a thermometer in my horse, doing some good on the Saturday night wall of a liquor store calendar, peeling away on the weekends here without you, showering over the telephone, passing away comfortably on the gin rummy table. I'll try not to drip too much, though. They say some of these new scuba morticians do wonders with water. Got my own private vat ready in serene seas. Words fail me. You know what it's like to have been conceived in a rape scene? <laughs> licking I like and liking I lick, and that is all there is to that. Perhaps you have a favor to take from me. Thank you. <laughs> Our next guest is back by popular demand. <laughs> Eileen Miles is a curator for Ladies Museum, which uh, has many contemporary poetic artifacts. And uh, <laughs> Eileen has written about Swiss cheese, tuna burgers, beer. Tonight, she says, <laughs> let them eat poetry. Eileen Miles. <laughs> okay. Cole Porter. My story is much too sad to be told, but practically everything leaves me totally cold. The only exception I know is the kiss when I'm out on the quiet street waiting vainly for what I meet and suddenly I turn and see your fabulous face. I get no kick from champagne. Mere alcohol doesn't thrill me at all. So tell me why it should be true that I get a kick out of you. Some like a Bach-type refrain. I'm sure that if I heard even one riff, that it would bore me to riff ickily too. Yet I get a kick out of you. I get a kick every time I see you standing there before me. I get a kick, though it's clear to me you obviously don't adore me. <laughs> I get no kick in the plane. Flying too high with some guy in the sky is my idea of nothing to do. But I get a kick out of you. <laughs> my cheap lifestyle. After a bourbon, I came in, turned on the tube, lit a joint and watched Monterey pop. Nearly wept when Janice came on. Janice's legs kicking on stage is a memorable sight. Janice does her sweet little Texas girl smile as her act finishes. She kicks her heels, and Otis Redding is so sexy. Millions of young Americans experience religion for the first time in their lives, or so the cameras would inform us. I'm concerned about manipulation in this media, how one gains such wonderful power. But of course I'm too tired, thrilled by the process of bringing down a familiar blanket upon my bed. It's nearly fall, nearly winter. I expect the stars will be bright, the woods full of bears. On the death of Robert Lowell. Oh, I don't give a shit. He was an old white-haired man, insensate beyond belief, and filled with much anxiety about his imagined pain. Not that I'd know. I hate fucking wasps. The guy was a loon, signed up for spring semester at McLean's, a really lush retreat among pines and hippie attendants. Ray Charles also once rested there. So did James Taylor. The famous, as we know, are nuts. Take Robert Lowell, the old white-haired coot, fucking dead. <laughs> Bolt of lightning. <laughs> Poetry reading. I heard this fucking beautiful reading last night, Bespoke the Flowers. I went to a bar afterwards, drank white wine beneath the Zumac. It was a pretty night out. I was pretty happy to be with my friends. Advocacy. If there isn't a point within your speech, then you flounder. You wonder what the other person imagines you experiencing. Human soul flopping in water. What a strange crisis. Linda Ronstadt belting out on the midnight special, when will I be loved? Really gonzo, Linda. Really profound days I spend listening to Bonnie Raitt songs or watching TV on a subliminal level. That toothpaste tube is really a hard-on. George Carlin is a highly paid entertainment knock. 
It's quite a revolution on this particular level. But listen, I didn't come home to talk to you. I was tired, wanted to be alone. You know, there's nothing for me, etc., etc., etc. But I get a little high and write to you, rather than deciding I'm St. Augustine or listening to Cole Porter songs, lovely in the morning. This, is, this one's called Classical Gas. Oh, bastard, I remember the year you had your thumb on my head. I was such a fool, wanted your approval, wanted only to impress you. I thought you were great looking, too. In fact, that was the main thing. Your looks fulfilled some shadow of my favorite kind of looks. Handsome man, I would have I kept my head if I could have imagined you ugly, really warty and broken toothed, never completely fantastic looking with my favorite kind of body. Your body is really the thing. If it wasn't for your body, I wouldn't have missed your mind. I imagine, I imagine your mind is also very good looking, but of course your mind has never been inside of my mind. That will be paranoid. <laughs> It's so lonely going to bed with you. I think of Leader and the Swan, how it's really, really fantastic looking. Mm. Well, this is a slow story. It's, it's a collaboration that's part of this longer work I did with Susie Timmons called the, the Midget, the Dog, and the Dreamboat. And this is the narrator, sort of the new friend the new friend. I was so lonely, sure, and who isn't, you know? I used to th see the three of them tromping home, whistling a merry tune, and all I could think was, look, the human race can get it together. Sure, one was a dog and another was a midget, but I've had lots of dogs that seemed almost human. Still, it just goes to show. <laughs> one night I was singing and talking to myself, sashaying down Second Avenue, and I felt a dampness at my hemline and a kind chuckling from in back of me. I looked down, and lo, it was the dog, and I turned back, and there were those two smart alecks, the midget and the dreamboat, laughing their heads off. I enjoy a good joke, too, so I joined in, and when we all laughed our fill, the midget looked directly at me and said, we like you, would you like to come live with us? My heart palpitated with joy, but I hesitated a bit, being proper, then said, well, I'd like to visit at least. How I love their beautiful apartment, the Kelvinator humming and shaking, filled with strawberry yoo-hoos and cases of Metricale banana, chocolate mint, French vanilla. You name it, and these boys sat down and offered it to you and told you where to find it. The midget had his blue chair, and it was his special blue chair. It was just so right, him there under the original Winkfield that stood on the wall, and it, his oily face shone with delight, basking in the twinkling of his Philco television. A toast to you, a toast to you, he would yell during commercials, and we all lifted our Tupperware wine glasses and agreed, beaming with smiles. It was a happy house. I knew that this was more than a visit. Little rituals evolved. The dreamboat and I took turns changing the robes of the infant of Prague, the biggest one I'd ever seen. I never asked, but it sure looked like somebody's old Patty play pot, Patty, pa <laughs> Pat <laughs> Patty play pal turned into a little boy god. I thought it would have been rude to ask. It was such fun. Besides the standard Advent purple, Easter white, deceased black, and martyrdom red. This infant had a riding outfit with jodhpurs and a riding crop. Midget said it made him feel suburban. Also, infant of Prague had a 60s nostalgia outfit, tie-dyed t-shirt, jeans with embroidered flowers, lots of beads. This was the dreamboat's favorite. Though he lived in Fairbanks during the summer of love, spiritually he felt a part of the love movement. He explained this to me so soulfully, and then looking deeper into my soul, he said, taking my hand delicately, and someday I hope that you and I, I mean, we do make the two-backed beast. Well, sure, I said, though it was years after I lived in this wonderful home that I learned the meaning of that phrase. We were fucking all along, but never did I realize the meaning of his strange phrase. <laughs> Especially we were fucking during the Joe Franklin show, which the midget regarded as funny and dreamboat thought crude and cruel. Once the midget crossed his little leg and straightened the crease in his gray corduroy pants, we picked up our big pink candles and sniffed as a bubble team and went into the WC and fucked our brains out. You two still in there? The midget would shriek and we'd say, yeah, we're just rehearsing. The hills are alive with the sound of music. Ah, what fun. We knew the midget, <laughs> we knew the midget knew what we were up to, but didn't dare barge in on us or doubt us when we said we were just practicing for the Block Association Summer Music Circus. 
And even now, I can't make love without hearing at least a few bars of The Sound of Music. I hope I am not depicting the midget in too harsh a light. He was a fellow of great love. Mostly, he loved Swiss classics. He had a whole bookcase full of tattered copies of Heidi. Whenever he got into a political argument, which was rare, he would pluck a copy of Heidi from the bookcase, slapping the cover dogmatically, he would say, well, all I'm going to say is it's all in here. It was pretty effective. I never knew what to say when he said that. I just shut up. So did the dreamboat. So did the dog. Then there were nights when the midget would not communicate at all. He'd just furiously smoke one alpine after another. Some days it'd be Raleigh's, other days Bel Air's. But he'd just sit there puffing, brooding, maybe rubbing a little Bengay on his arms from time to time. Sometime writing feverishly in a brown paper bag with his lindy pen, then going out to the fire escape against a rosy summer sunset, drenching his words in kerosene and flipping his zippo into action, confl conflagration and then nothing. He was a great artist and nothing more. He made his life into an art and he made a thing of beauty. The dreamboat and I and even the dog all knew that we were his creations, just scraps of humanity on the leftover plate of life. He gave us dignity and magic. Some nights he seemed to be suffering, so we'd try to turn the tide, tickle him, make googly eyes, lift him off his chair and place him on the chenille settee so he'd feel like someone else. We'd nearly go bananas trying to amuse him, trying to derail the glum cargo he was behaving. He'd just look at us, shake his little round head and sadly smile, what a combo, what a combo. We knew he loved us. That was all that mattered. Thank you. Directing, sort of, if she's not watching the uh, fight, and we'll just say good night. <laughs> Who's winning? <laughs> Ali won. All right, let's hear it. Ali's the champion. Again. Ali's the champion. And Ali's What's the it? champion. Yeah. Um, mm. Still, what else is new? Uh, Thirty seconds. How did you spend your summer? I spent my summer in New York City. Right. First summer I spent in Manhattan. It was awful. I hated it. But it was fun. Next summer, Queens. And I spent <laughs> oh, thanks. Asian Queens. And I spent every Thursday night on this show. And anyone that's watching this show knows that it's on 11 o'clock, Channel D. Good night. Good night. <laughs> God, the timing was incredible.